so hi Matthew, hi. ALM, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Uh, we are going to have a look at Pamela's new workout, right? Indeed. Okay, so this is the new Pamela's workout. Um, same uh, size and number of outputs as the old uh, one, intended as a master clock for your system. Uh, the big difference compared to the old one is a greatly improved display, OLED display now. And also the outputs, as well as outputting gates like the original, it now outputs various modulation signals, all factored into the uh, central clock speed. Um, you also get a lot more CV control, two CV inputs which are assignable to numerous uh, parameters which you can change on each of the outputs. Things like phase, delay, uh, wave shapes, randomization, looping, Euclidean patterns, um, loading and saving and recalling of, of, of the output setups. Uh, still, uh, it provides like a super stable master clock with an expander which gives you a DIN sync out and also a MIDI clock output as well as four fixed uh, gate outputs um, or it will follow, uh, still follow an external clock. Excellent. Um, and like with the incoming clock, you can kind of like divide that down or like or, or yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it like ideally works with like a din sync kind of clock, but it will work with sort of lower rates as well. Like it's, it should be better than the old Pamela uh, following external clocks. And, and it just kind of takes over when when you put an, when you put an external clock in, right? It doesn't need kind of to be put in an external clock mode. Uh, well, no, yeah, no, it's always waiting. You just need to tell it what. Um, what uh, pulses per quarter note to expect. You know, like basically how many pulses per note are going in, you know, so it knows how to sync to it. So, uh, you've got a little patch going on here. Yeah, uh, a, a little symbol patch. We've got uh, a Kemi outputting uh, in chord mode, outputting a chord, um, basically being modulated purely by, um, purely by Pamela. We've got some LFOs, um, yeah, basically just using LFOs coming from it, sync into various inputs, uh, just to turn it up. See, we just got a drone there and then starting Pamela. So you've also got um, you've also got that going through a prototype, module, yeah, right? Yeah. So this is uh, we've got a prototype filter here, which is based on um, the filter used in uh, old Akai S950 sampler. Uh, hopefully, going to be a more um, kind of mass producible partner to the fizzle guts, which uses uh, actual chips from an FZ1 sampler. So I just can't make very many of them at all. Uh, this will be a lot more mass producible. Um, but it, does, it, 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 it doesn't really sound that similar, but it does have a lot of character. It uses a switch capacitor chip, um, which means it has a fairly, um, a fairly high cutoff. You can't completely cut the sound off, but what you do get is a very kind of tight slope. It's a six pole filter and it does have a very kind of like nice, very sort of sucky sound, a lot of the old jungle people used to use it on uh, drums and whatnot. So I can just... Oh, and it also adds resonance, which wasn't on the original. Which control, so I'll hook in a couple of VCA built into it, and then also the overdrive circuit, so you can warm up the uh, 
whatever's going into it a little bit, get a sort of tiny bit of distortion. Cool, um, is that kind of like, uh, when, when are you hoping to have that done? Uh, hopefully sort of summertime-ish, so kind of close, just in a little bit of tweaking and, uh, and a name obviously. Excellent, well yeah, thank you very much Matthew.